someone suggested that I use one of these kitchen vlogs to talk about building my own computers. So, okay, <laughs> I'm going to do that today. It's easy for me. I've been building computers for many years, but I don't do it very often because I can build two computers and they could last me 8, 10, 11 years. I think the last computers I built before my current computers, I think I got 11 years out of those before they finally got so old that I had to replace them. Let me preface this by saying you don't save money when you build computers and you don't build computers to save money. You build your own computers to get what you want. For example, I do these videos, right? I have three channels on YouTube. I have a cooking channel that I do cooking videos on. I have a news vlog that I vlog about stories in the news. And then I have this one here, my kitchen vlog. When I used to encode a cooking video on my old computers, it would take roughly an hour to an hour and a half to encode those each video, one video. Now, the average is about 12 minutes. So it's a lot faster, these new computers. And that's what I wanted. I built for speed. Okay, before I get into the cost, I'll do that later. Let me talk about how you start about how you start building a computer. Well, a good place to begin is the motherboard. And this is an old motherboard. This is from my last computer. Okay, it's the system board. It's the main circuit board from which everything else operates. This determines pretty much everything else. For example, this is an Intel motherboard. So in this socket right here, I'm going to be putting an Intel microprocessor. Can't put an AMD microprocessor in an Intel board. It won't work. You also have to figure this, get this worked out first because you need to know what memory you're going to put into it, what case it might fit into, what video card will be compatible with it, um, how much power you need as far as your power supply unit. With each new generation of computers, new components are manufactured and the older components are no longer compatible with the newer hardware because they have different configuration, different speed, even the way things fit in changes so that it only takes advantage of the newest and most powerful and fastest hardware. So again, start with a motherboard. There's two main types. There's AMD motherboards that are designed for AMD microprocessors. And then this one here, this, this uh, kind, these are for Intel. You can buy cheap ones. You can buy very expensive ones. Um, here's a picture of my current motherboard. Although it says it's a godlike gaming motherboard, it was the best I could buy as far as um, MSI, the manufacturer. Godlike gaming. <laughs> X99A or something is the model. I'm not a gamer. I got the motherboard because what I wanted was I wanted everything for speed. I really wanted speed. Again, the goal was videos. I wanted the speed for working on videos. That motherboard, by the way, I think was $479, $480 just for the board plus tax. Okay, motherboard. Now, then the brain that goes in it, that's the microprocessor. As I said, it's going to be either an Intel or a... Um, AMD. This is it. It's just this little square chip. This is the microprocessor right there. That's the brain right there. And each motherboard, each generation of motherboard has a certain socket type. And the socket type is designed for the microprocessor that will come out. They could get bigger the configuration as far as the connection points could be smaller and fitted in more tightly. So like this chip is just not going to go into my new motherboards that are in my new computers. This is too old. This is a this chip is designed for a board with this socket type on there. This by the way was an Intel Core 2 Duo which was pretty good in its day but it's nothing. <laughs> 
compared to what I have in my computer now. Let me show you how this goes into the motherboard. Okay, so the socket has this little clip on here that you unhook. That opens it up. I have a piece of cardboard in there protecting the connectors because there's these little wire connectors in there. I don't care about this anymore, by the way. I saved this just in case I needed to go back to an earlier version, but it, the ones I have now, the computers I have now work fine. This is going to go in only one way. There's little notches on here and they line up with notches. If I can find them looks like that's them right there that fits in so now the brain is in there you put the cover back on bring the latch down hook it the brain is in place so one very important consideration is you got to keep this thing cool because it'll bake itself to death within seconds these things get very very hot so you get a cpu cooler and the old style in my old computers was this behemoth <laughs> here. Look at this, right? It's all these copper fins. It's these copper heat pipes, plate of copper in the bottom. You put a paste on there that was a heat transfer paste. The idea being to more efficiently transfer heat from the microprocessor into the cooler. The wire the cord plugs into the motherboard there's a place on the motherboard to actually plug a cp cooler into and it has a little fan in there that runs to keep it cool this was kind of noisy and another problem with it was it would get a lot of dust in there so every once in a while i would have to pull it out and then vacuum it out blow all the dust out of it we'd get really dusty after a while and how this attached was Again, for each socket type, certain coolers had certain brackets that could work with that particular cooler. This would attach from underneath the motherboard. This would attach to the top with long screws, and then the CPU cooler would lock into that, and that's how it was held to the motherboard. So that's how you keep the CPU cool. Okay, what else do you need to think about? going to stack my parts over there all right so I've got my brain in there but a brain isn't very good without memory so you need memory sticks and again it all depends upon what generation of computer you're going to work with this particular motherboard required DDR2 that's a type of memory a generation of memory my current computers are using DDR4 so I skipped the DDR3s because I used my old ones for so long. This is memory, random access memory. I've got a bunch of them. This board holds four. My new boards will hold eight. I just filled them all up. It'll hold 128 gigs of memory on the motherboard. I'll probably never use that much memory, but the space was there, so why not fill it up? Okay. So this is memory. Underneath these heat sink, red heat seat things, there are chips in there. And this would fit into the slots. Let me show you how that's done. So here are my four RAM slots. And as I showed you, this is the RAM. There's a little kind of a peg sort of thing in there. And then there's a notch in the, in the chip. So it's only going to go in one way. It won't go in this way because the notch is in the wrong place. And again, each new generation, the notches are different. Could be two in two different places. But you kind of line it up carefully. You slide it down into place. And then these side pieces are latches. So when you push it down, the latches come up. And they hold it in place. And you do that to all four of your memory, your RAM sticks. These are all my RAM sticks that were in this motherboard. Okay, so let's assume now we have this populated with memory. We have the CPU cooler in there. 
now comes the case. This is ready to fit into the case, but you have to make sure you get the right case because different motherboards are different sizes. There are micros, minis for little cases. There are big ones. I think this is an ATX. There are ATX extended. There are bigger boards, smaller boards. It's better to have a case a little bit too large than too small because you might need the room because of these things. <laughs> These are all the cables that you're going to eventually fish through every place to connect all of the components, the peripherals that you're going to add later on. I won't go through what all these do, but anyways, before I put this in my case, I'm not actually going to put it into a case, but I want to show you my CPU coolers. I'm using on my new computers a um, water closed loop a liquid cooling system there's a little um, I don't know what you call it a smaller component that attaches to the CPU and then there's hoses that go up to a radiator one of these pictures shows you the radiator the other picture shows you the radiator with the fans in place that radiator fits up into the top of the computer where it's kind of open on the top there's a grill work on the top I'm using a Corsair cooler CPU cooler so I bought a Corsair case that was specifically designed to fit that cooler perfectly and it works wonderful <laughs> it actually works and I love the case I love the case here's the thing with the case it was an older style case and it, it was discontinued but the seller still had them in stock I bought two of them because I built two computers I love that case because it's got so many features on it that I really like no screws to hold the side panels on just two latches you unlatch it you can take the side panels off if you need to get in there there's a dock in the top where you can put a hard disk I'll explain that in a little bit um, it's got all kinds of nice features in it that I really, really, really like. So anyways, that's the case that I got. Again, designed to all work together. Okay, where was I? I'm going to get this now into the case. So let's assume this is in the case. There's a bunch of holes. There's like eight. No, this has got, I think, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This has got 10 holes. 10 holes in it. They line up with places on the in the case they're all designed to hold the holes are all in the right place at least they standardize that that's fit in there you make sure you line it up the right way because this is going to be for the back of the computer this is where your sound cables attach for your speakers this is where your network cables in this USB ports here keyboard and mouse and so forth so you get it all lined up in place then you can start adding other components so let me show you what else goes in there okay this is a laughably small weak video card in its day it was a good video card this fits into one of the expansion slots on the motherboard these are the expansion slots these right here and then there are openings in the back of the computer so that when this fits in there in one of those slots the end the back end of the computer back end of the card put that in upside down goes in that way <laughs> the back end of the card will stick out through toward the end of the computer the back end and the reason why is because these ports here are where you plug your your monitor cables into everything today is HDMI so my new video cards and let me show you my video cards I've got some really really nice video cards one is water or liquid cooled I don't know what's in there for cooling but <clears throat> it fits into the motherboard and is attached to two hoses where there's a radiator and a fan that attach to the back of the computer again pulling in cool air from the outside to cool the fluid that's circulating through that radiator and then my other video card which is a Titan Z that was a, a really, really, really nice card. I think it became um, discontinued. People weren't buying it, but it was like the highest end card you could find. Really expensive. The last time I checked for prices on them, there were people were selling them on eBay, and they were asking for 
The highest price I saw was $3,800 for that card. I didn't pay that much, and I wouldn't. But those are really nice high-end video cards, again, because I'm doing video processing. But getting back to this, this is one of the components that you have to have if, to run your monitor, your computer monitor. So you buy what you want and install it in your computer. What else? Okay. I mentioned memory. Well, there's other kinds of memory you need as well. Where are you going to store your files? The old way, and still they're still popular enough, were hard disks. This is a hard disk drive. This is a small one, 640 gigabyte. Um, I've got one in there that's, I think, 5 terabytes now that I'm just using as a backup drive. But this would go in the computer. I would always have two. I would have one was my C drive. That's where my um, operating system and my software was installed. And then this was in the computer. This is my D drive. I would use this for storing my files on. So um, anything I was doing, for example, writing my website might be on this. I maintain my website in one of my computers. This was what everybody used for years, and I, as I say, they're still popular, but now they're using these. I, I'm not even going to unbox this. This is brand new. It's still in the box, but this is a solid, solid state drive. This has spinning disks in it. So there's spinning disks. There's these read-write heads that move over the surface of the disk. And they don't last I think they figure five to six years is probably the lifespan, although I keep some of them longer because they get used so little, um, because they just get used for backup, then they're taken out and put away. These will last longer. I think this has a 10-year has a 10-year limited warranty. There's no moving parts in this. It's like those memory chips I showed you. It's all chips on there. It's all solid state, no moving parts. This is my C drive in my new computers, and then again, I'm using this in my computer for a D drive. Okay, that's next things you need. And these just you install inside your computers, and then you use those cables I showed you to hook these things up to your motherboard. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing. This is kind of a, a tedious thing. When you put your motherboard in, there are cables that are attached to things inside your case that you have to attach to the right places on the motherboard. So for example, on the front of your computer, there's a switch to turn the computer off and on. Well, you've got to attach that switch to the motherboard. There may be lights that are telling you that the computer is on. There may be a reset button. There may be a light to tell you that the hard disk is operating. All those little connectors have to be connected to the motherboard. There are, um, for example, USB ports on the back of the computer. There could be USB ports on the front. Well, those have to be connected to the motherboard. So there are ways to connect those. There are certain blocks, headers, that fit onto the motherboard. It's all labeled on there, so you know which ones go where. But you have to hook up all those things. That's why it's better to have a case that's a little too large rather than too small because you have room to fish all these cables through and get everything hooked up. Okay, so that's the storage space. Then people typically buy one of these. This, this happens to be a DVD drive, so it can take CDs and DVDs. It's a burner, so I can put in a blank DVD or a blank CD and record to it. My newer computers have Blu-ray DVD, CD burners in them. I haven't bought any blanks, uh, Blu-ray discs, but those are really useful because I've done a lot of videos. I've got over 300 videos on YouTube, and it takes a lot of space to store the videos. I can't store them all on the hard disk, so what I do is I do a uh, two kinds of backups. I do a backup to a big hard disk. So most of my videos now are on a four terabyte drive. I got the five terabyte drive because I filled the four terabyte drive <laughs> with videos. So now I'm starting to use the five terabyte drive. And then to have redundant backups, I also archive each video and then burn the archives to DVDs. And I store those as well. So I always have everything faithfully backed up. Okay, what else can I show you? How I do backups. I bought one of these. This is a trayless caddy bay, if you will. This fits into the front of the computer. Your computer has these 
like plastic masks on the front of the box. And when you want to put something in, like um, one of these things, you take out the mask, slide this into the slot. There are screws in the side that you can use to screw it into place, to lock it into place. And then on the back, you hook up the cables and plug it into your motherboard and plug it into your power supply. I'm going to get to the power supply next because that's a big one. Um, you get that in place. Also, you can put this in one of those slots. And what this is, is it allows you to temporarily put a hard disk in your computer. There's a little door here you can unlatch and you can slide a hard disk in there. And this is how I would do backups. So this is a, this is a 750 hard disk, not too old, February 18th. 2014 so it's not too old and this will last a long time because I'm not using it all the time it's not running all the time I just insert it in my computer latch it into place again the back of this is all attached by cables to the motherboard and the power supply and then I can record what I need on this hard disk and then when I'm done release it from the computer take it out store it on the shelf I have backups. I do different kinds of backups and I use different kind of devices to do them. But this was one of the things that I used. The thing that I was concerned about this, and this is when it starts to get really interesting, is the hard disk can get very hot while it's running in there, but there's no fan directly cooling this. So what I did was I put this, I had one empty space down below and I fabricated this myself. This is a fan that would fit in the lower case. And then I kept it hidden by putting the mask back in again after I put the fan in place. But the fan ran below the hard disk. They were one above the other. So the fan would constantly be blowing onto the hard disk to keep it cool while it was in computer. See, when you really get to where you're knowing what you're doing as far as working with computers, you can actually start fabricating some of your own parts. Okay, where's my, oh, there it is right there. The last thing I've got to show you is how do you power all this stuff? Well, you get one of these big honking things. Look at the size of this thing. Ah! This is a PSU or power supply unit. This is a rather small one. This is 80, 850 watts. I think my new computers have um, over a thousand. If not a thousand, it could be 11 or 1200 watts. I call this a semi-modular one. These cables are permanently attached. One of these, this one goes to a big block on the motherboard, and there's another one that goes to a small block on the motherboard. They're labeled. These are PCI. So these go to the video card, and this one goes also on the motherboard. CPU. So this one fits onto the motherboard. I guess this one runs just the power, not the power supply, the central processing unit, but this one powers the whole motherboard, big thing. And then you have these little sockets here where those cables I showed you, you plug those in and so you don't have all these cables hanging out. The old ones, all the cables were all attached permanently. In this case, you only use the motorcycle going by you only use the cable you only plug in the cable you need to use to power your computer so I might only have two cables plugged in rather than having eight or nine or ten all attached to this box what's in my computer now is a fully modular everything is plugged in it doesn't have any permanent wiring like this so and then after that you attach up your um, your keyboard, your mouse, your monitor, and then turn it on and start installing your operating system. These are my operating systems. Back in the old days, they came on things like this. This is why you needed that DVD, CD, DVD player, because it would come on a disc like this and you put this in your computer and then it would you could use it to format your hard disk and then start loading your operating system and then 
uh, even before you, then once you start that, I can't remember which you do first, whether you do the operating system or whether, whether you do the, I think you do the, there's um, utility disks that come with the motherboard and you put those in first to activate and get the motherboard configured inside of its, um, its own little internal memory thing. The newest version of mother of uh, operating systems. I love these. This is Windows 10, and this is what I have in my computers now. If I can get this out, they're so small. They come in little tiny <laughs> thumb drives. These little flash drives that plug into one of the USB ports on the front of your computer, and you use this. To load the operating system onto your computer. I even when I got my laptop computer, it had um, Windows 8.1 on it, but I was able to get the free Windows 10. It was in, I was in within that um, time limit to get a free version of Windows 10. So I bought a blank flash drive, and I put the operating system, the free one that I got on this. So if I ever have to reload that laptop computer, I have the operating system to do it. I don't have to buy it. So because these this was a these were $199 each. This is Windows 10 Pro and I had to buy two of them because I have two computers. You can only put one operating system on one computer. You can't put it on two. They don't allow you to do that. So when you go to um, validate it, it'll say, well, you've already got it on a different computer. You can't validate it on two computers. So I bought two of them, $199 each. Okay, I talked about how much you don't save. Let me finish by shocking you and telling you how much I spent. On my last two computers, I decided that this time around, I wanted to build absolute high-end, best-of-everything dream machine computers because I've never done that. I always build production rigs because that's what I use my computers for. I don't play games on my computer. I'm still playing an old 1998 or 89 game, Alpha Centauri. I play that once in a while. Or I'll, if I needed to kill some time while I'm waiting for something to run, I'll just play solitaire just to, to kill some time. This time around, I still built production rigs, even though I have a godlike gaming computer motherboard in there, in both computers. But as I said, my big thing was to build really good, high-end, best-of-everything production rigs because I'm 65 years old. I figure... I'm going to get 10 years, at least 10 years, out of these computers, hopefully. I'll be 75 when I'm ready to build computers again. Am I going to be able to build computers at age 75? And if I can, I'll build dream machines again, no matter how much they cost, if I have the money. But are you sitting down? Because <laughs> this, is, this is how much money I spent building these computers. These computers I have right now, each computer... Each computer cost me $6,000. I'm serious. That microprocessor chip I showed you, that Core 2 Duo, for the new ones, the little chip that I bought, that alone was over $1,000. The video cards were over $1,000. I mean, it all adds up. Who would spend $12,000 building two new computers? But again, you don't build computers to save money. You build computers to get what you want. And I got what I wanted, and I love my new computers. One thing that I've done that's a little bit different, and I have a different video to show you that. It's, it's earlier in my kitchen vlog. I actually attached dust filters to the outside of my computers, everywhere that it brings in air from the outside. All my fans are set to bring in air, because the air is going to get out. There's places where the air can get out. But I hate dust inside my computers. I think I can show you a picture, if this picture comes out okay, of some of the dust that was in that, um, that power supply unit. I hate dust in the computer. It's just so difficult to get it out once it gets in there. It's a lot of work. Sometimes you have to disassemble the computer just to really, really clean it out. 
with these dust filters I've been running those computers now for well over a year so it's been about a year and a half that these computers have been running there's no dust in there I have to change the filters every month otherwise the computers will overheat because the filters get clogged with dust but I change the computers change the filters rather each month inside the computer I can get in there with a flashlight and look around and I don't see any dust in the inside it's working perfectly now we got a jet going overhead I live near the airport anyways that's what I know about as far as building my own computers it works for me I wouldn't advise others to do it unless you were a real computer geek uh, in which case and there are out there you you can really build some really high-end computers I've seen some modded computers where they can't even get it in the case they have so much stuff on it hoses running everywhere that everything is liquid cooled it all sits out in the open um, fantastic but that's not what I want I want a nice desktop box simple clean nothing fancy about it because again what I build are production rigs so that's how I build computers